and advertising something that touches all our hearts and who better than the advertising veteran Alec Padamsi to share his thoughts on the decade gone by and of course tell us about the three most iconic campaigns of the decade. Thank you so much Alec for joining us on the show. Well lovely to be here I and mean, this is very interesting for me I mean the decade wow I must say iconic you know means that it is something that stands out long after its time has gone. Now, I think the one that will be remembered, even if it's not aired, and I think they've done a marvelous transition, is the, is the, is the Vodafone campaign, which originally was the Hutch, which was originally the Orange, which was originally, originally, originally. Uh, uh, and that campaign with the pug, and they've kept the pug. They, they've changed the boy, who's always, the, the, the pug is always following the boy, to now the pug is always helping the girl. Sure. But it's still the pug. The pug is, if you like, the brand ambassador. And I'm glad they've retained that. Why don't we uh, take a look at what uh, the agency has to say, the client has to say, yeah. and look at the making of uh, this wonderful ad, the Vodafone Pug ad. Great. The dog had become the mascot of the brand. given was primarily to uh, around three pillars. One was to really highlight the network. At the same time, uh, no techno speak. And we wanted the entire thing to be human. And these are the primarily the three pillars of the brief given. We didn't show like, you know, people talking over the phone. And we avoided all that. And we actually made the whole network promise in a very human way. The whole story of a dog being the most loyal uh, uh, friend uh, to man, I mean, the man's best friend. I mean, that 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 was the simple insight, and that's how we captured that with a with a boy and dog story. Yeah. We never expected it to be such a big thing where people would actually start buying pugs, and uh, the pug prices would go up, and this was never expected. We had like some four or five options of the dog and uh, one of them was a fox terrier, there was another small dog and the first time the pug was rejected <laughs> because we said oh this is too cute and you know it's going to like really uh, take away from the idea you know and we went ahead with another dog and when, when we were shooting the dog couldn't perform so uh, we were desperate in Goa and, um, and the production team then finally uh, got a pug which was available in Goa and we said okay fine yeah so from Vodafone pug who yeah. would you nominate next as one of the most iconic campaigns Fevicol has done a super job over the years Fevicol and it's not one of your large brands like you know cell phones or airlines or you know credit cards or any of these it, it is a brand with a reasonable budget, but the, it has really impacted our emotional retina. And that's something I strongly believe in. They have one single idea or one single promise, and that is we stick the best. No, that's all they say. And then they show and show with the, the fishing. And, fishing. You know, you, I love that, that one. No? Alec, that's interesting because, I mean, your number one and your number two yeah. uh, campaigns that you've just told yeah. us about, interestingly, both come from o &M. What does that tell you about the advertising industry? That tells me that o &M has done a superb job. In the last decade, it has outstripped all competitors. Every time I think of an ad, it's usually an o &M ad. That's great. So let's uh, take a look at what client, what the agency uh, had to say about this iconic campaign. If the man on the street talks about it, if he loves it, even if it, that brand doesn't directly connect with his everyday life, I think you've pretty much achieved it. And I think Fevicol does that brilliantly. Most of the other advertising is so unreal that Fevicol is, is refreshingly real. So and it's a lovely take on a, an observation of Indian life. When it started off, it did fairly basic stuff. They knew that once they had sowed the seeds of or, you know, build the foundations of the fact that it is the ultimate adhesive, especially for the carpenter. Once that platform is sort of cemented, then they can go on building on it. Once that happened, they realized now the time has come just to tell interesting stories. Alex, 
So from uh, Fevicol, let's move on to the third best iconic campaign of the decade. What's your pick? There is no doubt in my mind that one of the longest lasting and most iconic campaigns India has ever produced. And it's such a simple three word slogan. And when I give advertising talks or lectures as you call them, I always say, okay, I'm going to give you a slogan. I won't finish the slogan. You finish it for me. And I just say, utterly, and everyone says, butterly, delicious, amul. What could be stronger than that? But what's interesting about that campaign is that it is very topical. It's basically a hoarding campaign. Absolutely. So it's basically a motorist campaign and a pedestrian campaign. It's not in the press. It's really not on TV. And yet it has this tremendous pull and has kept Amul at the top all these years. So let's uh, take a look at Amul. Yeah, let's flash back, look at all the ads. Yeah. And let's look at what the agency has to say, what the client has to say, and uh, look at the formation of this brilliant campaign. Amul Holdings, uh, which you see, we change almost uh, once a week. Uh, has been going on for now almost about 41 years. We've tried to maintain over the last 40 years consistency in theme. We have always laughed at things, commented on things, been like a social observer, which takes the butter a little bit beyond just the brand, but to a commentator as well. The main thing about the campaign is that we go topical. So if you notice every seven days there's a new topic and this is true of all India. Cartoons are a great way of getting a child onto your side. And this line just, just formed. I just wrote this line and it sort of stuck. It is the basic idea underlying Amul which is the good of the farmer who produces milk, good of the consumer who consumes the milk. And this act of balancing the good of both, that makes Amul what it is.